So what does it mean when we say chip on a smartphone? What is Snapdragon? What's that company which MediaTek and Samsung has to do with all of this? Today we're going to be breaking down what a chip actually means and actually does on a smartphone and how they affect your smartphone pretty much capabilities. Hello guys, I'm Luigi. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today is a little different. Uh, it's been a very busy couple of weeks and I actually couldn't manage to film the A-Roll on my house or in my kind of like room. Uh, so this time I'm in a hotel, hence why I'm holding the microphone and kind of like playing around with the lighting but hopefully content still comes out pretty looking so let's start breaking down by what is a chip in a smartphone and what does he actually do a chip is basically the brain of the smartphone it's basically the one that gives its full task functions and it makes the smartphone work it is responsible for running tasks taking pictures uh, listening to music uh, multitasking and all these things that come into play when you're using your smartphone as well as giving you certain features that we've not seen in the past that it has made some leaps and bounds over the last few years of progressing the smartphone chips each chip has a certain amount of cpu cores which stands for central processing unit core each core is responsible for doing tasks different tasks and kind of the speed of those tasks that are being made one single call will be able to handle a certain amount of task and then from there on is when it gets um, into the more high performance things when you have like dual core quad core octa core hexa core i can't remember then you just start getting like two cores four cores six eight 12, 16 cores of performance or efficiency. But when it comes to smartphones, these are usually built on what is called an SOC, which is basically means system on chips. So everything's built within the chips and then everything from the chip on, that's when it provides all the system to the smartphone. So you don't have any extra parts because it's already built within the same chip. So what does this mean is that basically a system on chips is that any manufacturer can build their own system and their own preferences within a chip and obviously you need an operating system like maybe android or the huawei one or the oneplus which are obviously built on top of android uh, or obviously apple has their own bionic chip which again is built they have the ios built in within that chip so then what it means is once they receive the chips or once they get a manufacturer for the chips, then they can build those systems to fit their phone and to fit kind of like whatever the preferences might be. But the best way to understand an SOC is by pretty much like the name says, system on chips. So everything is built on the chip, which is gonna be the CPU, the input, the output, uh, internal memory, and many other things that are built in within that SOC. There are many companies that provide chips and there are many companies that try and create their own chipsets for their own smartphones. The most popular ones at the moment are definitely Apple. They create their own bionic chips for everything. So for the smartphones like the iPhone, for the headphones like the AirPods Pro or all the AirPods lineup. And obviously for nowadays, the laptops like the M1 chip. You also now have Google building their own chip, which is the Google Tensor. Now we're onto Tensor G2. And we'll probably start seeing that Google Tensor make its way over the, all the Apple products, uh, even maybe like the Google Assistant stuff, like the speakers, the tablets, the smartphones, the smartwatch as well, and obviously the earbuds as well. So my, we might start seeing that a lot more often. But then we have one of the big dogs and one of the providers, the biggest providers for especially Android smartphone tablets and earbuds as well, and that's Qualcomm. So they provide chips for pretty much every massive company that uses Android as an operating system and they provide the Qualcomm chip or the Snapdragon chip actually because the Qualcomm is the name of the company and they provide the Snapdragon chip which we always see as uh, Snapdragon and then a number at the moment we're on Snapdragon Gen 2 or something like that they always change the name it used to be Snapdragon 855, 865, 8 99 900 whatever it is they change the names every year because every year they make strides on different features and different uh, capabilities of that chipset to be on the smartphone but a lot of companies use snapdragon as a chipset one of the biggest ones would be probably samsung all the flagship samsung phones so like the s23 s23 plus and s23 ultra they all use the latest and greatest snapdragon chip at the moment and we also have a third kind of like on the list 
that is not is big, still quite a big manufacturer for chips, and they do provide for a lot more people than you think or that I can remember right now, and that's MediaTek. I know they provide the chips for OnePlus for the lower tier phones, because I know OnePlus sometimes can use the Snapdragon chips for their flagship phones, like the OnePlus 9, OnePlus 8 Pro, and OnePlus 8. But they also use the MediaTek chips on the lower tier phones, like the OnePlus Nord CE or the OnePlus Nord 2. Um, so MediaTek, usually you can find it a lot more on like the mid to low tier phones, because I'm guessing it's a lot cheaper than Qualcomm and obviously the other competitors. Nobody will buy or will be able to buy anyways the um, Apple Ionic chip because that's definitely built just for Apple and iOS. But it'll be interesting to see if the Google Tensor chip will actually make its way past Google or it will be kind of like Apple and stick to their own products, which is probably what's gonna happen. I don't think they're gonna end up uh, start manufacturing chips for everybody else. I think it's just mostly so they can have more control of it. But when it comes to really chips and manufacturers, you'll definitely see kind of five names always roaming around, especially in the smartphone world. Obviously, you see Apple's Bionic chip on the iPhone because that's incredibly popular and because Apple sells a stupid amount of iPhones. You also see the Qualcomm chips, so the Snapdragon ones, uh, because again, they pretty much provide for any big um, smartphone company that has Android or that uses Android as an operating system. They use Snapdragon a lot, even if for the lower tier chips of Snapdragon or maybe the Snapdragon chips from three years ago, they still hold up up today. And we still see some of those mid-tier Snapdragon chips on the mid-tier phones nowadays. You also see a lot of the MediaTek as well. Uh, I believe I might have seen Oppo using MediaTek. Uh, some of the companies like Vivo as well, they use MediaTek as well. And some of the smartphone companies, which at this point in time, I really can't remember, but I know OnePlus definitely uses it because it used to have a OnePlus phone and that had a MediaTek Dimensity chip. But yeah, when you think about chips or when you're looking at a spec sheet of your phone and you see a chipset, you always look for one of the names of, especially if you're buying an Android, look for Snapdragon, MediaTek, Samsung Exynos, maybe another different chipset. And obviously have a look of what the features coming up on that might be. Uh, some of them have been progressing into taking less power or being more efficient with this, same size batteries, or even if your phone is the same size battery as your phone from last year, but it has a newer chip, the newer chip might be able to use the battery in a more efficient way so then your battery lasts longer. So those are the kind of features that you'll see. Obviously you'll see all the features like popping up in the moment like AI work, kind of higher resolution videos or being able to stream or kind of one of those kind of features that you see on chips coming up at the moment. But again, the chipset is one of those things that is just understanding it. So if you see it on a spec sheet, just Google it and see what comes up with. So obviously you have Qualcomm, MediaTek, you have Apple as well, and you have obviously Google and Samsung making their own chips as well. So it's always good to kind of Google it and have a look at kind of what to expect with that chipset, what features, maybe what pros, what cons you might get from that chipset as well, because I know sometimes you have certain chipsets are more prone to different things or companies haven't been able to build, or maybe they kind of skipped something that it wasn't up to standard with a chipset, or just because they're trying to save cost, the chipset cannot do as much as it could potentially do. And obviously they have different tiers. So obviously the higher chipsets and the more expensive chipsets will go into the more expensive flagship phones with the latest and greatest specs. So yeah, so anytime you see that, just kind of give it a Google, familiarize yourself into if it's good for you, if it's bad for you. Uh, even if you see a phone with a kind of two, three year old chipset, it might still be more than enough for your needs and users. So that is all for me today, guys. Thank you for watching part four of this part of five video series. Next week will be a conclusion and it'll be kind of like a, a roundup of everything we've talked about over the last four weeks. And I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I really hope you guys enjoy this series so far. It's been fun to make videos around tech that are not about a specific product like a review, even though I do love those, these are kind of fun to research. I will get to learn a lot and I get to hopefully transfer that knowledge to you. Uh, if you have any feedback, please let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe, it really helps the channel a lot. But apart from that, I'll see you guys on the very next one. Hopefully back in my studio or my room, which is pretty much my studio. But thank you, see you guys next time. Bye bye.